Hi, this is Val Stone with Advancing Science at Gettysburg College. In this video, I'll teach you how to use our new Vernier Go Direct Bluetooth wireless sensors. Advancing Science has upgraded most of our Vernier sensors to the new wireless option. As a result of this upgrade, we will no longer provide a student device to interface with the probes. Instead, your students can use their school-issued devices to connect to our probeware. There are two different ways that students can connect to the probeware. The first option is to install the desktop app. Go to Vernier's website, search for graphical analysis, and there is a free option um, that is available for a variety of different platforms. There is also a paid option. This video will talk about how to use the free option, and we found that to be sufficient for our needs. You'll also see a link to a user manual here, so if there's additional functionality um, that you'd like to learn about, you can check out the user manual. If you don't have the ability to download the app on student devices, or if you're only going to use uh, the Vernier probes a couple of times a year, you can use the free web app. It's graphicalanalysis.app is the URL. We recommend posting that link on your classroom management website so the students can click directly into it. We do recommend using a Chrome browser to access that app. Your Advancing Science Loan Kit will include a classroom set of sensors, usually eight to 10 sensors, so the students can work in small groups. In addition to the sensors, the tub will also contain a set of USB plugs, you can use those to charge your probes on this small charging block, or the plugs can be used to connect the probes directly to the student computers. You may want to use those USB cables to connect to your student computers if the battery is running low on the probes, or if you're having trouble with the Bluetooth on a student's computer um, and you want to connect directly to the computer. There's also a set of labeled screenshots for Vernier graphical analysis um, so that your students can refer to these while using the program. For the purpose of this video, I'm going to use the installed desktop app, but everything looks exactly the same, whether you're using the desktop app or the web app. When you launch for near graphical analysis, you'll see this option. Your first thing to do is to click sensor data collection. Now the probes, after you power them on, will flash red, if they're flashing red, that means that they are powered on, but not connected to a student device. So I'll go ahead and select sensor data collection, and my computer is going to scan for sensors that are within my proximity. You'll see a list of all the probes that are available right here on your screen. Because your students' groups will be working close to each other, they will see a whole list of available probes. To find the probe assigned to their lab group, just look on the back of the probe near the barcode and find the code that matches um, up on your screen. Then you'll just connect to the one that matches. As soon as a student group connects up to the device, it will flash green and that device will no longer be available to other student groups to connect to. If you look up here, you can see I'm connected to the temperature probe. I can click on this little I button here to check the battery level of my probe. I can also connect to another probe. I could collect temperature data at the same time as I'm collecting carbon dioxide data, for example. Once I'm connected up to my device, then I'll go ahead and click Done. That'll take me to the graphical analysis um, working screen. In the lower right corner, it'll tell you what kind of sensor you're connected to and the live reading. If you click into that, I could change the units that I'm using to collect data. I can also check on the battery level of my probe. And for some of the probes, um, if they need to be zeroed or calibrated, that's also how you would um, zero or calibrate your sensor. The lab documents all will explain if that step needs to be taken. The temperature probes do not require zeroing or calibration. You'll also want to refer to the lab document to set your data collection settings. That's over here in the lower left-hand corner and you'll be able to collect data in a variety of different ways. Most of our labs are time-based. You can change the units. You can set either the rate or the interval. You don't need to set both. As soon as you set one, the other will automatically update. You can set how long you'd like to collect data. I'm going to just collect for just a short time for the purpose of this video. 
Again, refer to the lab document for the data collection settings. Then you'll hit done. And you can see the x-axis has been scaled um, to match up with those data collection settings of only 15 seconds. Now, we're, before we collect data, we can also draw a prediction. If you'd like to get your students thinking about what the uh, resulting graph might look like, just click down here in the lower left corner, graph options, scroll to the bottom, and choose add a prediction. Here, students can just draw a line to make their prediction. Once they've made their prediction, they can go ahead and hit save, or they can cancel and redo it. Now I'm ready to collect data. So I just click the collect button in the top center of the screen, and you'll see that the line starts um, forming on the screen right away. Now, if your students need to stop data collection early, they can go ahead and click stop, but it will automatically end at the end of the data collection time period that you set. So I can see that I'm back to collect here at the top. That means my data collection has finished. Now I'm going to collect my second round of data. This time I'll hold the temperature sensor in my hand. I will click collect again. And you can see that we're collecting data in a new color this time. And because I'm holding it in my hand, we can see that that line is rising. Again, they can stop data collection early if needed, uh, but it will automatically stop at the end of this um, set time. Now to see both of my lines at the same time, both data sets, I just need to click over here on the Y axis to bring up the plot manager. That allows me to turn on or off any of the data sets as well as my prediction. I can also see the data table to go along with this. In the upper right corner, view options, I can turn on the data table and I can also turn on the meter. The data table shows all the data that was collected along the way and the meter shows the live temperature reading uh, for my sensor. To analyze my data, I can analyze the entire graph by just clicking down here in lower left corner, graph options. I can view statistics for the entire data set. I can find the slope of the line. We can make do a variety of different data analysis here. So we'll go ahead and view the statistics. This is giving me the statistics for the full data set. Now, if I only want to analyze part of my line, I can click and drag to highlight a section of the line and then come down to graph options. And this time it will only analyze the section of the line that I highlighted. If you want to zoom your graph, you can just use this button here to zoom to all data. That will zoom in um, to fit the data that you've collected. But if you want to scroll up or down in the data, you can just take your mouse cursor over to the y-axis area, hold the mouse button down and slide up or down. That'll allow you to view um, a little bit larger portion of your data. You can also come to the x-axis and do the same thing to scroll side to side. If you want to change the X or Y axis, come down to graph options, scroll to the very bottom, choose edit graph options, and here I can change the scale on my X and Y axis. I can also give my graph a title. If I want to change the labels on my X or Y axis, I can come over here to my data table. Again, I access the data table um, using this button in the upper right corner. To change the um, axes labels, I just need to click on the little dots next to uh, the column headers. I could choose column options, and here's where I can change um, the labels on those. If you'd like your students to analyze the data individually, you can copy the data by just clicking and dragging to highlight, and you can copy your data and paste it into a spreadsheet. Then your students can share the data with the rest of their lab team um, so that they can analyze it individually. This also works great if you have students who are absent or who are working remotely um, to be able to share data. Now, if I'm a student who was absent or who wasn't using my device to collect the data, but I want to do my own data analysis, 
Um, what I've done here is just closed out of the graphical analysis app to show you the very start um, of how that graphical analysis app looks when you first open it. So a student who is working with just the data, they're not connecting up to the sensor, they're going to choose manual entry. And this will bring up a blank graph, a blank data set, and then you can come back to that spreadsheet where you've pasted the data. You can copy it and paste it into uh, the, the data table over here on the right hand side of your screen. Then the students can go into graph options and they can work to uh, manipulate it. They can connect those dots if you want them to. They can label their X and Y axis by coming up here to column options. Um, they can analyze the data. So it's a nice way to be able um, to engage all students in the data analysis process or to be able to share data with students who are maybe absent or working remotely. Uh, the Vernier products have a lot of extra functionality. You can go to Vernier's website to learn more about how that works. Um, there's also a lot of lab opportunities that perhaps advancing science hasn't developed into formal labs. Uh, we invite you to use our probeware to um, do experiments that either you or your students have developed or maybe you found some other experiments listed online. Um, our equipment is always available for loan. You don't necessarily have to use one of our pre-written uh, labs um, to utilize our equipment. So hopefully this helps you better understand how to use the Vernier um, wireless probes, and please reach out if you have additional questions. Thanks.